Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wild Chats, your home for everything animals. I am Ryan. That is Maria. <laughs> and uh, today I was in a, uh, I, was, I was in a cutesy mood. We, I decided to, mood. Okay. I was in a cutesy mood. I was poking around the internet as, as, as I'm opt to do. And I, uh, I came across a lot of just cute animal videos, the cute okay. baby animal videos. And uh, some are funny. Most are just like, aw, kind of videos. So uh, well, the theme today is just going to be aw for the most part, I'm guessing. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you can ever go wrong with a cutesy video. I think if you're depressed or if you feel a little bit blue, then to brighten up your day, an animal video will always, oh yeah, always makes me happy. Yeah, there used to be like a, a there was a couple TV stations I think at one point that had like twenty four seven like cat cams, like some of the like middle of nowhere TV stations, and then just like you just turn it on and, and watch kittens and. And then the internet took it over, and then there was like the webcams for the kittens, and yeah, just something you kind of like. I oh. love um, what I love about animal videos is also how we have evolved into music for for animals, so they're not stressed out. So there are channels that actually play eight hours of music, yeah, for I came across fireworks that. and things like that. And I used to do that to Pepita a lot. I think that there's when we were working on some other stuff. I remember coming across. There's like certain frequencies and stuff that actually calm uh, dogs specifically during uh, fireworks and things like that. There's certain tones and keys, and I know classical music and stuff like that that actually piano help. music at sixty beats per second. You know, very rhythmic and slow. Um, so that's something that people can look into. I think that's really interesting that there are types of music or certain. Mm -hmm. uh, paces of music that can help kind of calm animals with uh yeah i love when that happens because that way you know your pet is gonna be okay and fireworks uh in colombia they are everywhere there are times where the fireworks is basically the only thing you hear for hours to to end hours to end o hours on end <laughs> I like something hours to end right. would be like the end of the world like as the hours to end that's it we're calling it it's done <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, yes, exactly. Not, not, are you sure they were fireworks and not just raucous cheering crowds of soccer fans just going off at any, any oh, minimal yeah, that soccer also, game? Yeah, that is also something very fascinating is, well, actually, you hear in the U.S. when, when teams are playing, like the Super Bowl and things like that, you're walking, I'm walking peeps, and all of a sudden you hear this rumbling of people screaming watching a show and or a or, um, sport and you're just like wow so that's pretty cool so grow like what was the first animal you ever saw born i actually well i don't remember the first animal i saw born but i remember when i was a kid my grandpa my uncle had a pig farm okay and uh one of the one of the women one of the one of the nice pigs. round young ladies. Um. <laughs> one of the pigs was about to deliver, and I was able to assist, and that okay. was so much fun to be able to assist. And the veterinarian to tease me was like, "Here, you may have to insert your hand," and I was like, "Yes, <laughs> I have to help." And he's like, "Oh, never mind." <laughs> sort of like gross you out and scare you off and you're like yes all right this got even better <laughs> i know i got so excited the guy was like okay i hope we don't have to do that then <laughs> somebody meet some little... human friends um <laughs> <laughs> yeah that girl is wacko but well we knew that <laughs> this pig will be born and be my best friend ever it's mine <laughs> my own big pig <laughs> oh, so I decided that uh, we're just going to kind of, uh, we're going to start from the beginning since um, it's going to be From the beginning, okay. Is it from the beginning, is it the chicken or the egg, Ryan? Go. It's going to be, it's going to be the snake and the egg. Oh, <laughs> a coral snake. Look how adorable. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, from the beginning, he's already. But look wow. at him trying to keep his balance. He's like, I don't quite have this down yet. Hold on. What is this stuff? This is air. Yeah, but you can almost see that he's trying to, to come out of the thing. But they're also, um, with animals, the reason why as the snakes will rise up is because they're being attracted by something. So that's why when they say the flute 
uh, uh -huh. when the guy is the snake charmer, what he's actually doing is playing with their sensation of of movement and their perception of movement. Oh, okay. So if the charmer himself wasn't actually moving the flute, the snakes would just kind of be boring and just kind of raise up and sit there? No, no, no. The, by moving the flute, the snake moves. Yeah, that's what I mean. So like the the worst snake charmer, like you just know you're not cut out for this profession whatsoever, is like you take the flute and you just don't move. And then the yes, snake doesn't move. If you want to end like, your life really quickly, that's, that's the way to do it. Okay, all right. So then, then basically your nice way of telling a performer of that caliber, you just put a bucket of paint next to them and you're like, you might want to just be one of those like silver painted men that don't move. You're kind of better at that. That might be your thing. <laughs> it seems to be the case. It seems to be. I don't think I could be one of those three performers. Like there is no way I will just sit still that long. I can barely sit still. In this chair, I have tea and coffee and uh, that's all I have. My phone. Okay. All right. So like hours on end of just sitting there doing nothing, just not not for you. <laughs> she she says no while also doing a nice dance head bob at the same time. Yep, yep. That's, that snake is gorgeous. I wonder how long it will take for them to produce the venom. Um, because I don't think they're at that microsecond of being born will they have venom glands because I don't even think their fangs are fully formed. But it will be interesting to know that. Brian, yeah, and, do you and know? it also depends, yeah, because certain animals like it. I know some toxicity from animals actually come from like the food they eat and their environment. There's there's some um, aquatic animals that are uh, venomous that actually get it from their diet of eating other venomous animals. You don't uh, even have to fly that far. Think of a monarch butterfly. They actually get their alkalinity from the from the butterfly bushes. They have gotcha. these milky the milkweeds. They have these literal alkaline a poison and it makes them taste bad. So when okay. it grabs them, it usually releases them right away because they just taste okay. bad. Yeah, it was kind of this interesting thing to me when certain animals eat other animals. Like what butterflies can't really be that like chock full of nutrition. Like how many butterflies would you have to eat as an animal to be like, but ah, it is yeah, protein. I'm full. It what? is protein though. Now speaking of snakes and butterflies. Okay. If there could ever be a relationship between a snake and a butterfly. I was reading okay. a, an article about animal camouflage. Okay. And um, they were showing these pictures, pictures of different animals as they camouflage. And one of them, the first glance, I thought, oh, two snakes, like literally rise up like that. It was actually the wings of a butterfly. Oh, yeah. Is it a butterfly? I think it might be a moth or there's a, a moth, moth a also moth. that does it. Yeah. I was so shocked. I truly thought it was going to be two snakes. Because when you when you think, at least me growing up in, in the States, when I think of moths, I always just think of the ugly, white, powdery, eat your like, clothes yeah, kind of animals. But there, there are some colorful, gorgeous moths out there. And then I started thinking to myself, like, what what's the differentiation? And I read that one of the, the main fact, really, to tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth. Do you know what, what the main difference is? It's usually the shape of the wings and the way they carry them. Okay. Like butterflies go up and moths go like further down, something like that. There is, it's, it's to do with wings. And I think that's as much as I know. Okay. Want to get even easier? Butterflies come out during the day, moths come out at night. Oh, I was working too hard. Yeah. I was like, huh, I never really broke that down again because most of the time, the moss that I would see would be the, the irritating ones you're not trying to pay attention to. But yeah, butterflies are, are more uh, day animals and moss are more coming out at night animals. Nocturnal. That is so right. neat. <laughs> that is so neat. Um, so after birth as a, uh, as a tiny, tiny, cute, adorable animal, what's, what's one of the things you do as a kid? Once you're kind of like, you know what, I've had enough of my parents. What, <laughs> what do you do when you're, when you're move when you're developing and moving on in life? What's the next stage? So what, what do I remember when I was two years old? Is what you're saying? No, 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 no. Hatch no. from my just... from my cocoon <laughs> as a metamorphosis, like a like a little frog, a tadpole. When you were a tadpole, what did you do with your life? Well, you had no legs but a tail. Hold on. <laughs> 
What did you do, Ryan, when you were a tadpole? No, no. I, I mean more to the extent of like just social development as time goes on, you know, like you're five, you join kindergarten, you do that whole thing. Um, usually once you, you kind of leave the nest and stretch your wings outside of your own family, you start looking for friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, wings. yeah. Maria, Maria, did you not have a lot of friends growing up? <laughs> this seems like a foreign concept <laughs> to you. <laughs> friends? You find friends? <laughs> what is that? No, the funny thing is, the first thing that came to my mind was I was always so, um, like in my own little world, Okay. that I would connect more with cats and dogs. And I like to um, grab crickets and I like to grab worms and okay. butterflies and things like that. So when you were talking about it, I'm like, regular friends? Or what kind of friends do you, do you think are really the coolest friends? And to me, the coolest friends was just exploring the animals, even though I was always very yucky, like I certain textures and, and okay. like, but... But yeah, when it came to animals, I was like all in. I didn't care. Well, that's so animals do that too. The uh, your your friends as you're growing up and developing don't necessarily have to be the same species you are. Exactly. I mean, animals count, and and you know what, animals animals feel the same way. Sometimes, really? sometimes a duck makes it a lovely friend if you're you're a puppy on the run. <laughs> do you see how cute he was grabbing the duck and the dog? Look at it! Look at it! That's chat. He's like, Hilarious. Looks like, Dasha <laughs> looks like I know the dog is not harming the duck. No. But no. in that particular shot, as he as the duck is being lifted, that first reaction, look, oh, look at the do you see that other guy trying to yeah, get just, in on the action? Really I love how the duck's just rolling with it too. It's like he's not trying to walk, he's just like, whatever. Yeah, this that that dog right there. He's like, wait, hold on, what's up, guys? Where are we going? Where, where, yeah, where are we? is that a toy? Is hey, that oh, a toy? Wait, oh, that's concrete step. Okay, I guess I'm not coming with you. Hello, oh, hello. But that <laughs> shot right there is the funniest of all. Now, like, semi having the air. I'm like, am I gonna be okay here? So this is uh, this is where you can tell by a before and after photo how much faster ducks grow than dogs see this is that's that's both both young right both yeah both spring then, chickens literally then, oh yeah we gotta switch it now buddy now now you take me you take me man i can't i can't hold you anymore i can't carry you you're too big you're too big that is adorable <laughs> clearly I love not because the same i don't know if this is the same is couple the same? or not no no I'm joking, but, is, but I just thought that the, it looked like the same puppy, kind of. I was like, hold on, hold on. This puppy over here. And look at this the tail. Do you see the tail? bigger dog. <laughs> Aww. But look I just how love nice how the, the duck is being so friendly. The duck is being very though. friendly, by the way. What's that? The duck is being very friendly, by the way. Well, when he walks, he looks like he's kind of struggling. Like the dog's a bit heavy for him to carry. And the dog is shaking right there. So I wonder if they put him up in the in the dock. But the dock is being sweet. Like the dock is being adorable about it. Well, I mean, it looks like he kind of he hops on right there. He got on on his own. Yeah, but I don't know if that was a that's actually if you look at him, he's shaking. Go back yeah. to the beginning. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I wonder if they actually rewound. Because look at the way you see that? That was too smooth. It looked like he actually Oh, you he think somebody got creative. So the dog was getting off and then they just flipped it. Mm. They did. Because if you look at the reaction of the dog, he's first of all, he's shaking as if he was placed. That's too smooth. Like, yeah. And you see he's shaking almost okay. like he was placed there and he's a little scared and he fell. Okay. So they probably try a couple of times to get that cue shot, which is fine. It's adorable. Honestly, nobody's getting hurt. But it is hilarious. The... The visual manipulation that adds to the cuteness level. Yes. Like the, the puppy climbing on the dog is extremely adorable, even though if we look into it closer as we did, you can you realize the critter yeah. is not is not um with high, with silver. Hi silver is not <laughs> a cowboy there. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed Wild Chats. This will probably be the end of our show. Maria has found a new career in video forensics. <laughs> she's she's going to go work for the FBI now or something and uh, break down video. Um, 
I think we got to what episode 16 here. I hope you guys really liked it. Uh, <laughs> nice to have met you. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, that was pretty good, though. No, you're right. You're right. I didn't. When I'm picking the videos, I'm more looking to kind of create a story or just things that I find cute and kind of put together in a certain way. And it's fun because you've never seen these. So to get that angle, I just, it, I wasn't looking at it that way. And we've had videos like that in the past where I was like, oh, I didn't really think of that perspective before. So that's part of what makes this fun for me is getting it's your adorable. reaction, but that second perspective as far as what's going on. But to me also, what I love is the conversation that becomes real. Like, yes, cuteness is awesome, but also what is the truth behind it as much as we can discover during the during that short segment of that video so to me yeah. it's not only about the cuteness but also like oh even though it made me say oh this is really what happened and there are mm -hmm. a lot of videos like the cats are like sharing like as if they were pushing the ball to eat uh -huh. and then pushing the ball to eat and actually if you really look at their muscle movement you realize that they put the video backwards the gotcha. cat is not sharing the ball the cat is actually taking the ball and you can okay. see it by by the joint when you're grabbing something, when you're oh, pushing yeah. something, I was like, "Ooh!" So it was to me that's fun, and so I that's why I also love sci-fi movies because I like to <laughs> discover like, okay, how do you do this? How do you do that? Now horror movies. Okay, how about how about sci-fi horror movies? Depends on how horrible the horror is. Okay, if it's a mild horror, I'm okay with it. If it's okay. really like, I will not watch. Friday, uh, not Friday the 13th. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. We should play charades. Like, what is Maria saying? <laughs> Which movie is Maria talking about? <laughs> yes, okay, I got it. I got it one clue, all right. Puss and Boots. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Puss, okay, I guess your yeah, cats have a little clawing motion. Okay. <laughs> Calm down, Antonio Banderas. It's all right. You don't have to get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> You're perfect the way you are, Antonio. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Forensics and video critics. I mean, uh, actor critics. <laughs> all right. So may maybe you can help me with something then. Because <clears throat> this next video, I don't really know what the critter is. I can't quite figure out how this scene happened. It just okay. kind of perplexes me all together. At all the same time, it's just together. absolutely adorable. So lend me your, your professional eye now with your uh, your new side career. and uh, <laughs> break... <laughs> I shall open the show psyched again? <laughs> yes, just uh, break this down for me. What? <laughs> That's a sugar glider, isn't it? Sleeping on a puppy, I on a puppy think tower. It is, and it's just chilling on a plant is it i mean that's a puppy flower a puppy a puppy i mean it's a flower that's yeah but the sugar gliders just hang out and hug plants while sleeping this just seems like a no weird... that seems weird like that one is a baby sugar glider it should be uh, with its mama it should still be with its mom but i did i don't even really understand how the uh the whole scene got got put together Hold on, it's not a poppy seed. It could be an agapanthus. I can't see focused. the background. To oh the my plant. gosh, it's too adorable. I'm less focused on the plant type, but I just don't know how. I don't know enough about sugar gliders to know. Is this a thing? Is this something they do? <laughs> no, because they're nocturnal animals. In fact, so he's sleeping. I find them that so makes fascinating. Sense. I find them so fascinating that. I started reading a little bit about it. I'm, I'm no expert about these gorgeous creatures, but I didn't actually know they were marsupials. Uh-huh. I honestly thought they were mammals. Like, I thought they were closer to a squirrel, not closer to an opossum. Okay. And so I'm they have pouches? Opossum because he has an O. I don't know why people pronounce it possum. They're, I thought they were two different animals. I thought they were really close in the in the chain, but I think there's an opossum and a possum. I think they're two. I think it's just like tomato, tomato. You think so? Mm. All right, guys, sound off in the uh, in the comments <laughs> below or on the social media feeds if you're catching. We're gonna put that in the questions after the show. 
Uh, is it uh, possum, opossum, or are they two totally different animals? I want to know. I honestly think they're the same. But anyway, going back to sugar gliders, <laughs> um, when when you go to the northern parts, maybe even, I don't know how far north, but I'm talking about like in Michigan. And it, I think they go up to Georgia and stuff. I don't know how far. Okay. Um, at night, because they're nocturnal, you can actually go, quote unquote, hunting. And I am super specifying hunting because okay. the fun thing is you go with a, um, yeah, I don't even think this is good for the animal now that I think about it. But hmm. this is what I used to do, which now I'm starting to think it may not be very good. But okay. what you do is you literally hear them. You can hear them squeak. Okay. And they squeak different than a bat. Okay. High, very, very high pitched noise. And it's just a lot of fun to like capture where the noise is coming from, then point a, um, a nice light, flashlight, mm -hmm. and you can actually see them gliding from tree to tree. Okay. It is so much fun. I used to take my niece and nephew at night uh, to go hunting for sugar gliders. See, now, now if you were like British, it'd be sound even more cruel. You'd go, at night hunting for sugar gliders and you'd point a torch at them while they're gliding from tree to tree. That's the uh, the <laughs> British word for flashlight. But when you talk about torching an animal, it just sounds like you're flame throwing it to death. And hunting and hunting. Yeah, and so hun now hunting you're like and torching. Yeah. <laughs> they're gliding towards barbecue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was mortifying. <laughs> if, if you were curious, that would definitely be bad for the animal. You definitely. <laughs> yes, I think flashlighting it is not as bad as torching it. <laughs> yes, but but still still also not as bad as gaslighting it. So flashlighting, yeah. then gaslighting, then then torching. Okay, we got our levels now. <laughs> Isn't gaslighting now as lang for like being mean to someone? Essentially, yeah, it's a very specific type of being mean to somebody. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't know that until I started reading like different memes apps that have different memes and I'm like gaslighting what are you talking about mm -hmm, until mm -hmm. I realized now people are like oh are they drip or are they wet or is it yeah now there's now it gets even more fun because then you go to San Diego and you go to the gaslight district which is like the downtown area but then you're like well you just go down there to make fun of people or is this like <laughs> The name of the zone. Let's go you get drunk and you do both. I don't know. I don't know. You're just gaslighting at the gaslight. I don't know. <laughs> I, I find fascinating the the slangs, and not only that, but when the when the the abbreviations became extremely popular, and I'm not uh -huh. talking about Michael Jackson's uh, song that he does an abbreviation. I don't even yeah. remember which one. Um, when I first read LOL, uh -huh. I'm like lot of love like i couldn't figure out what lol was i mean a couple it's of episodes ago now. guys i didn't know what psa was so true that was, that was one of the first it. ones i think that might have been our first episode where i did the psa first or second one of the two <laughs> i think so too and i'm like what is he talking about because i thought you were talking about a um playstation unit <laughs> so okay like, playstation what <laughs> <laughs> so that's as cute as i as he gets Okay. You can guys like me, people. Seriously, you can. The <laughs> <comments below. laughs> it's going on YouTube. I'm sure they're going to. <laughs> oh, I don't doubt it. I, I have hope and um, whatever. It is what it is. So so the nice thing, if you if you do have a pet sugar glider, is you can play catch with them. Did you know that? Really? Like you toss them so they catch themselves on a tree? Hmm? <laughs> You're pretty close, actually. <laughs> Surprisingly yeah. close. How horrible is that? Yes, you're so, it's it's kind of a version of of it's catch and fetch, all in one motion here. There you go. Here's how they play catch with a sugar glider. You'll say you toss him, but that, is that a sugar glider? I think so. Oh my gosh, it's an albino sugar glider. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Playing catch, playing catch. I will die of joy. Look at how the, cute the, it is. The fetch version is where you just toss it out as far as you can and it runs back to you. <laughs> there you go. There's fetch. Number one. Never seen an hey, animal so happy to be running. Grown. Like you can tell the, the, the owner was walking backwards. Yeah, yeah. You can see him backtracking. <laughs> well, that little critter is having fun. Uh-huh. Not nocturnal now, are horrible. you? Huh? <laughs> He's not nocturnal now, is he? 
No, he's not. By the way, having sugar gliders, they're they're they people have them as pets, but uh -huh. they're actually very hard to take care of because they're such omnivores. Basically, they eat a lot of everything, and their nutrition is very uh very picky. And they call sugar gliders because they like this. They have a sweet tooth. Okay, is what I read. Well, I, I think one of the other problems too that I came across as I was picking through videos and finding other fun stuff was that almost any nocturnal pet, but especially sugar gliders and other animals, you're not going to sleep, guys. If, if you get a nocturnal animal as a pet, they're active at night. They're running in their wheel at night. They're yes! around Chim their cheese. cage. So this, uh, this girl had sugar gliders and basically they would squeak because they wanted her attention. Once they woke up and were ready to start their day, they would squeak and squeak until she went over to the cage and kind of said good morning to them. But for her, sometimes she'd go to bed early and now all of a sudden they're waking her up, but it's a pet. They wake up and they want to see you. So nocturnal pets, unless you like work in Vegas or somewhere where you have a job where you're also nocturnal, maybe not your yes. best choice of pets. And that's the thing. I think most of humanity is attracted to cuteness like a sugar glider is an absolutely adorable creature you can play with interact with but taking care of them on what's best for them is not necessarily what fits our schedule like you said or feeding having turtles is not easy um honestly there's so many beautiful creatures that you can have as a pet including a lion mm -hmm. but is he really the best for the animal and for you that is the question. You say t turtles are, are hard to take care of, but then I just read a story the other day about a turtle that got lost in an attic for like, I don't remember the number of years, but it was a the lot one in of Brazil? years. The one in Brazil? I don't, I didn't read where it was from, but it was like over five years this turtle was missing in this attic. I want to say it was closer to 10, but I don't know the exact number. Um, but that guy was really easy to take care of. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> and and the, the thing is turtles are very amazing animals as how they adapt to to water intake and things like that. It was a story in Brazil of a turtle that got lost for a couple of decades. Okay. Decades. Not not five years. Like, I think it was closer to 30. We might be talking and about the same animal. I just didn't want to overshoot shoot and kind of be very, like, dramatic. Like, it was 20, because I thought I read 20, but I'm like, ah, even five is impressive. I'll just go with five. <laughs> Dude, a year is impressive in any animal. But True. they said that they um, it was, the, it was their dad attic. Um, and they closed the door for many years because the father had passed away and they had lost the turtle during a construction. So they didn't think it was in the attic. Yeah, makes sense. And they said that because of the paper and things like that, it attracted a lot of critters. So okay. the animal fed off all those critters. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't delve far enough into it. That That's very interesting. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's fascinating how animals really do adapt. But Ryan, what's the weirdest pet you have ever actually seen someone have? Mm, in person? I got to say, I growing up, I mean, it's just California's a little boring. Everyone's got their dogs and, and a cat at home or a hamster or a fish. I don't... Uh... I had turtles growing up. Um... Not even a hedgehog? No. That's another uh, English thing. You don't get a lot of hedgehogs in the United States. My neighbor had a hedgehog. It's illegal to have hedgehogs in Colombia, actually. There's a yeah. There's a lot of like ferrets are illegal in California. You got to man. They are cute, but I just do not like the smell of ferrets. I'm not a Ooh. ferret pet fan. Yeah. No. no ferrets as well as uh, actually you can have a oh this conch. I was thinking of Pepe Le Pew. Okay. This is my okay. rendition of Pepe Le Pew. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 I don't, um, I think ferret is almost as exotic as I've ever seen of a pet. I don't see, that's the other thing too. People get so busy and so wrapped up in their own lives that I just don't think that you go to different parts of the world and people have more exotic pets. If you can have a farm or some space and a place for animals to kind of roam or, someone's always home or there's different family dynamics and stuff. I think that's where you get a little bit more of the variety of, yes. of pets. Cause there's not a lot of people on the West coast, at least that I can think of that are going to go buy their, their kid, an exotic pet because they're going to end up taking care of it. So it's, I don't I know. Agree. Yeah, I don't think I've really, 
Not I had uh, snakes. I, not personally, but my family had snakes. And okay. my biggest concern is, yeah, people are very excited to have a snake for the first years until the snake gets to be gigantic. And then now you're really in trouble with a snake. Yeah. And uh, people let it loose. And that's the problem in many parts of the world that there are invasive species. And I'm always so concerned because all oh, the fish died. Off it goes to the toilet. Yeah. And you just never know where it's going to end up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think sometimes, too, that families buy. We were talking about just the last episode. We are talking about buying pets for your pets instead of yes. uh, instead of just, you know, you, you get a dog and you want a second dog. It's like, no, my dog's lonely and he needs a pet. He needs someone to, to take care of or, or hang out with. The and, emotional uh, support pet for your pet. Yeah. So so whoever this this next family was, I think they, they had this dog and they're like, you know what? I'm going to get this dog a cat. They're going to be relatively the same size. They can kind of play and hang out. They're not exactly, you know, the same species, but dogs and cats get along in a house. They can make good, yeah, they do. very the good. The best friend was a cat at first. Okay. Until the cat grew out of his britches and decided that dogs were not cool and moved okay. to the cat clan and literally abandoned Pepita. And he was well, these- so sad. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> it is so sad because Pepita would look at the cat and she wanted, she's not the most playful dog and she has never really been the most playful dog. But it was one of those things that you can really tell that she couldn't understand why the cat wouldn't want to play with her anymore. On cut, they used to cuddle together and okay. she was like, yeah, we're done. You just went, okay, all right. Well, I, I hope that, uh, I hope this cat doesn't grow up to, uh, to, to shun this dog because I just, I just think that would be sad because. I think they were put together and meant to be friends. But there's a chance that this cat might outgrow this dog. I'm not sure. You think? I'm I not think sure. Maybe. I don't know that this family planned this this pairing out very well when they uh, they matched this dog with this cat. <laughs> you see the cat is like, like, what should I do about this thing? What should I do about this one, two, snap? Oh. He's actually being very gentle. Uh huh. <laughs> the tiger is like, uh, you know, I hold the power of four <laughs> and these paws. You should see this paw in four years, buddy. <laughs> Heck, four months, not even four years. <laughs> that is the cutest little pair. And I that don't... French bulldog is adorable. Uh huh. Uh huh. So but my he was interested at first. I mean, he was interested at first until the dog turned around and they're like, um, I, I don't know how I feel about you. Yeah, I don't, and I don't unfortunately have any backstory whatsoever as far as how uh, how these guys got put together. But you know what, let's have some fun like we did in the in the last episode. Uh, you guys- Yeah, Ryan, what do you think happened here? No, no, I'm not gonna give it away this time. I'm gonna leave it up to the people in the comments. I'm, I'm, I will not give you my version of this story. Oh, come on. Um, <laughs> you guys in the, uh, in, in the comments below, <laughs> come up with a story, make up whatever you want. I had some fun with it on the last episode with why the octopus uh, did not- <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Like the volunteer at the aquarium. <laughs> Give me some detail. Get a little creative with it. And, uh, tell me how these guys got put together, because I, I I want to see, I want to see the creativity level of our crowd and have some fun with this one. That is awesome. I mean, <laughs> I know um, cheetahs and and other and actually many animals who who live in herds or large prides or groups of of other animals. They do need to have companions. They really yeah. do, and. I always go back to cows need friends. And if a cow needs a friend and a horse needs a friend, imagine how animals that like to live together, like cheetahs and lions, they like to live together. They do need a friend so that they can relax. And cheetahs are very um, flighty. Okay. <laughs> Literally, they're very fun, flighty. Fun phrase, sounds like cheater and it's cheetah and flighty. And yeah, okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the cheetahs are very flighty. And I know how they run with their tippy toes. So okay, cool, are they do pretty friends. solitary though? Cheetahs? Tigers? Are tigers? Tigers solitary? are. Yeah. Tigers okay. are. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe that's but, this guy's problem. But I don't know. You see, when they're young, they are with their parent, with their mom for a while. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're very solitary. I always worried when you when you think of 
cheat us, going to cheat us. Okay. Why, Ryan, why does a cheetah cub look like a honey badger? I, I, their cub? with most animals, I assume it's defensive. That way they don't get attacked because who's going to mess with a honey badger? Who will think that yes. a weasel will be so scary as to <laughs> scarier look than a like cheetah? A yeah. <laughs> Like a top predator. Like, honestly, I was watching a video. and I love videos of animals, as you can imagine, even though I like to do my forensics here. Uh, I was watching a video about these cheetah cubs and, and how they look like badgers. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, this is, this is just incredible that mm -hmm. an animal is that feared that evolution has taken this top predator, apex predator, into mm -hmm. another predator, but most people don't know much about a honey badger mm -hmm. or a wolverine if you're in the Americas. That's that's why uh, bear cubs look like rabbits. Same reason. That everybody's fearful of the rabbits, so the bear cub just. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how, how am I gonna debunk this? <laughs> I just started laughing. You don't have to work like, that hard. <laughs> Hello, hello. <laughs> in an imaginary world designed by Ryan, you just don't know what's important here. So if, if we're gonna go to like imaginary worlds, let's let's think more fairy tale worlds. And in this <laughs> next video, the the family, I think, had a good intention, but I think that they're gonna regret their decision ultimately in the end. Um, oh God! Now. For this, for this little girl, this is probably the most magical Christmas she's ever had. A unicorn? Yet, yet I don't think this is going to look like this a year from now. But okay. um, but for now, can I guess what Christmas. it is? This is her Christmas. Yeah. Oh, monster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Hey, baby, girl, would, you're would, in trouble. would you like seven dogs for Christmas? Here's seven dogs. Here you go. I mean, I love chihuahuas. I have a chihuahua, but I'm going to tell you something. They are very crazy animals. I know. <laughs> the one on the left looks like Pepita kind of. Which I, is I was just going to say, like, that doggy <laughs> looks like Pepita. She's uh -huh. adorable. Uh -huh. She has very pretty hair. Very pretty hair. Long hair chihuahuas and... Well, that's a Pomeranian. There's a Pomeranian on the yeah, left, right? Yeah, they, they threw in a few. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I know they're not well, all puppies. I'm sure those dogs have been in the family for a while. But when I first saw it, they're so tidy. I'm like, oh, the parents are going to regret that choice. Then I looked at the clip a little more, and I was like, ah, oh, okay. Those are just a bunch of, like, tiny breed dogs that are still young, but not, like, puppy puppies. Can you imagine getting that many dogs all at once? I mean, if you're a rescue, I understand, because... You know, if he's a uh, mother who just bred all those puppies, that's fine. But speaking of that and cuteness, um, <laughs> I was watching a video of this female dog trying to keep her. She had like she had a large litter. There were like ten Labrador puppies and her. And when the owner opened the gate to let her in, right away she took charge of those puppies. She was not okay. messing around. I mean, she was barking at them telling them to stay away. And as soon as they all dropped, like they were all calm and collected, okay. she allowed them to feed off of her. I was nice. so impressed. Nice. I'm like, wow, this is a good mom. Very good mom. So I have usually a... when the dogs get bigger, they really do assault the mom in a yeah. way that it's not cute for the mom and not good for, for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always that borderline of when, yeah, when do you wean them off and how do you wean them off? And then some go for it and some don't. And yeah. Yeah, especially because they start catching bad behaviors as they get older and they're still breeding, uh, feeding from the mom. They start mm -hmm. catching really bad behaviors. Mm -hmm. And some some veterinarians do say that eight to 10 weeks is the way to go. I still think they're too young, but that's me because I always think animals should be longer with their mom. But hey, let the experts decide. Uh, yeah, I thought the rule was like three months or something like that. It's like the earliest you should pull a puppy away from its mom. Um, Eight to ten weeks. Okay. 
Yeah, but that's barely two months. So that's even a lot. Yeah, it's a little sooner than, than I thought. I It's heard. a lot sooner than I thought, but that's what some people suggest, which I think is crazy. But hey, whatever. Another thing you guys can comment on is what yeah. the veterinarian told you. Because it yeah, also could be depending on the breed, depending on the country. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to run through some fun uh, baby animal facts? Let's do it. Should we let's let's uh, let's go through a little uh, uh, smattering of uh, baby animal facts. So, smattering. Um, smattering. We're gonna go through a little a little collection. Um, okay. So you know how like babies babble and you can't really understand what they're saying. Like sometimes the parents can. There's a little like, kind of baby baby ease going on there as babies babble and babble and they kind of work themselves into language by just mimicking sounds and kind yes. of going through the process of getting their vocal yep. cords and, and learning all that. Well, apparently marmosets do the exact same thing. Like you'll hear them babble, babble, babble. And it's that same progression of learning the sounds of their mother and learning that form of language. They it's like exactly like human babies. That's adorable. I have another, I have one, I have one. Okay. Chickens. The mother will talk to the eggs before they hatch like she will talk to them like she will make noises so that they identify her okay I like can i can i one up you without being cruel of course chickens you can. chickens and turtles can communicate to each other and their mother through the egg shell through exactly that that system of but sound. how i mean the thing is that the incubation of a chicken and the incubation of a turtle are completely different since the incubation of a turtle, the mother literally lays the eggs, covers them, and off she goes. No, so they can communicate egg to egg. Among each other. Yes. I also find it to be so fascinating other. also because depending on the temperature in which they are, they will be mm -hmm. either male or female. Isn't that, to me, that's just mind-boggling. I was reading an article the other day that unfortunately because of the the temperatures of the water and stuff that some of the alligators and crocodiles are being born in, like they're all female, I think. It, they're all turning out to be one sex because of the temperature of the environment. Mm. So you're ending up with this unisex situation starting to evolve uh, with some of the reptile species. Wow, that is very saddening. That is very saddening and worrisome. Mm -hmm. Although one male, um, they tend in the in the um, reptilian world, they tend to travel. Uh, they're not always stay with the mother. Now the mother crocodile does stay with her babies, and mm -hmm. it is just so adorable how they talk to each other. To me, that's one of the cutest things mm -hmm. how they speak to each other, and their body language is so rich. When you think of alligators, people don't think of them as profoundly smart and profoundly communicative animals. Mm -hmm. And they truly mm -hmm. are. Their body language is fascinating. When they open their mouth and start squeaking, it's a way to call their mom. Oh, they just made me yeah. so happy. Yeah, sea lions do the same thing. That was one of the facts that I had found, that they basically do the exact same thing as far as vocalizations, communicating with one another with their parents. Mm -hmm. And then you start realizing even with Pepita, like she barks a lot and has weird coughing. Mm -hmm. I already knew if the coughing she's producing is just because she's upset mm -hmm. or, and that goes with the baby thing you were talking about, you know, your, your dog, you know, your baby, you get to understand literally you can translate what they're saying. Yeah, and I know sure. that I'm like, Oh, she's hungry. And my sister's uh -huh. like, how do you know she's hungry? I'm like, I know. I already <laughs> know my dog. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, exactly. You you build this communication, whether there's actual spoken language or not with, yeah, when you bond. Well, also body language. And we think of language as a measure of intelligence. And what we don't realize is the fact that we don't understand it doesn't mean they're not communicating. And body yeah. language is so big in the animal world. I actually find it amazing what they're saying amongst each other. Yet we think, oh, they're just lifting their ears no they're not lifting their ears they're really telling you stuff the way they move yeah. their ears well that's the other, the other thing too is I, I forgot the animal i think it's giraffe but they just found out very recently that they're communicating on a on a frequency that we just can't hear 
So animals that we think don't speak actually do speak. It's just at a frequency we can't hear. So there's a hum amongst the, the, uh, the I know it's not a pack for giraffes, but among the group, the herd, and they communicate to each other pretty consistently. We just they hear them on the herd. Yes, they're heard them on the herd. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it, you, you heard me correctly, correct? Right. <laughs> I, I heard you right. So did the herd. Right. Um, yeah. Have you ever seen a baby elephant? Like yes. Really? How small? Like week old, two week old? No, they were a little older. Like what you see at a at a at a zoo that now it's called a conservation centers because most okay. of those are becoming now conservation which places. Which is fantastic. Yeah. Which is fantastic. I 100% agree. Um, so I've seen them there. Like there was a time I went yeah. to the Tampa Zoo and everybody had babies. Okay. I couldn't believe it. It was the first time I've been to that zoo and the lion had babies, the orangutans, the monkeys, the elephants, the hippos, the tapirs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So adorable. So have you, have you seen like videos of, of elephant babies and stuff online? Of like course. it's amazing how like uncoordinated they are. Like elephants getting up and going. They're not like giraffes walk within like hours of being born. Yeah, but that um, neck is wobbling all over the place too. You know what? The one thing that you don't think about when you think about a giraffe being born is like the distance they have to fall after birth is like six feet to the ground. And I was reading something that basically said that that's actually essentially what starts their heart like that. It's kind of like a compression CPR. Like that fall is kind of what gets them up and them. going and moving. They're just kind of shocked into life in that way by kind of hitting the ground. Remember they used to spank children when they were born also mm -hmm. to produce the first cry because mm -hmm. it helps them spell any fluid they may have in their lungs. Mm -hmm. So that burst of crying allowed them to really just expel anything that was left that does yeah. not need to be there anymore, preventing them from having any lung issues. Unfortunately, they had to stop that because after the uh, the lawsuit of the doctor that spanked the baby and it cost him $10 million on a malpractice suit, you just can't do that anymore, Maria. That's just... I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what was the first uh, horrible joke about animals being afraid of rabbits? And now, <laughs> yeah. Ryan, you're on a roll, man. Oh, come on. And my hair is just sorry if I keep moving it. I just feel like I have a weird strain of hair. I grew so up I in California where people to... see McDonald's for getting burnt with hot coffee. I mean, come on. It's... <laughs> no, but uh, you know what? I was, I made myself some coffee. Speaking of drinking coffee. Okay. And I usually don't put the water boiling. I don't make the what I allow it to have the like the first boil when it starts gotcha. bubbling and then I stop mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. Also good for dark tea. You don't want to burn it. Anyway, yeah. one time I didn't stop it on time and I forgot and I put it on a um, to go cup. And an hour later, I'm like, ah, that coffee should be. Mm -hmm. That's all I said. That was the yeah. end of it because I burned yeah. myself really bad. I'm like, who am I gonna sue me? Yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> I mean, it is obvious. They, it, it, I don't know how we got sidetracked on last year. All right, coming back to uh, so baby elephants are um, so uncoordinated when they're born, you actually can see them like tripping and stumbling trying to catch their balance. And a lot of times they'll actually trip over their own trunk. But <laughs> when baby elephants are insecure, they do something that human babies do and they actually suck on their trunk when they need to comfort themselves or if they're feeling insecure about something, you'll actually see baby elephants sucking on their trunks like a baby would be seen sucking on its thumb. That is so adorable. That is so completely adorable that an animal will do that. And then uh, baby dolphins are actually born tail first to prevent okay. drowning because most people don't realize dolphins are mammals. They got to breathe air, but they're born yeah. underwater. So since they kind they can come out tail first, it gives them time before they're out of the womb because the first thing the mother needs to do immediately is then swim it to the surface, so it can actually get some air. And uh, have you ever it. seen dolphin babies in the wild? Or what's the smallest dolphin you've ever seen? I don't think I've ever seen a dolphin in the wild. I mean, I've like I used to like vacation in places that had like the swimming with dolphin experiences, but I just I'm not. 
I don't know. I just anything where they use an animal for tourist stuff, I usually kind of avoid it. I want to see it just because it's a thing to see. It's the same thing with the elephant rides and stuff in Thailand and other places I've been. There's just certain tourist things that I kind of avoid for my own stuff. So, um, yeah, growing up like surfing and boogie boarding, I never really saw dolphins. But again, where I was at, the water was just so brown that it could have swam right. under three feet. I wouldn't have seen it. So. <laughs> and that's so surprising because um, one time we were driving in Florida and all of a sudden I see these little tiny tail. And you can almost tell the mommy's pr probably was just born, like pushing it out. Okay. Oh, my gosh. It's just so adorable. When they get a little bigger, they're so playful. And you can just see them being just too cute. They're too cute. Oh yeah, no, they look rambunctious are... little children. They're just, I think they did a poll because that was like the number one like female tattoo for like years and years and years was a dolphin. Like back before tattooing got like super trendy, but like when people girls had like one tattoo, like in the nineties, it was like the I dolphin. Thought it was a butterfly. Okay, I think butterfly was on the list too. There was just like the simple like most popular tattoos. I don't know why I read this list, where I read it. Clearly, it was twenty years ago. But I remember it sticking in my brain. Go like dolphin, huh? Okay, dolphin. Okay, <laughs> that would not be my choice. I, I, if I ever get one, I want it to be a dragon. Or you're just like I'm gonna go from no tattoos to like full dragon up my back with the tail down one arm and like the head popping on my shoulder. Like if I'm going, right I'm going here. Here. <laughs> Yeah, that'll go with my personality. With my bubbly personality, I want to have a dragon just coming out. <laughs> and I it's got to fit, it it's gotta fit in your body so it, of course it'll be in line with the theme of this video it would be a baby dragon because you know it's got to fit oh, on you a baby dragon of, a little tiny puff of, of uh, like smoke as he's learning to pop smoke <laughs> see that'd be a western dragon because eastern dragons I don't think blow smoke I don't think the dragons no I think they're water dragons a lot of water thing. dragons. I think there's air dragons and stuff too, but the 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 fire thing came from uh, like the medieval ages in the West is where the the myth of the fire dragon came. Oh, okay, came it's not an because Eastern I thought the Ningas was it the Ningas uh, who the reason why Chinese uh, tradition uses a lot of red is to scare the Ningas. I think it's called the Ningas. It's uh, I, and I they just... use fireworks. No, they and, have like, uh, a ton of dragons in their culture, and they're very symbolic, and they're very uh, tied into different aspects of culture and, and symbolism and stuff. They just don't produce fire. Um, uh, but yeah, you're right. The fireworks were there to, to scare them away, the noises and stuff, but they're just not fire-breathing dragons. That's a very Western um, idea of dragons. I wonder where that, that came around. from. I bet you there was somebody who was a pyromaniac, and they just, oh, no, it was a dragon. I, you know, there's that era back in like the middle ages where everything was something like there's whole videos that I've seen of like this animal used to be called this or they never thought this animal even existed and or it was actually this animal. And that is um, so fascinating to me. It's it's very human nature, though. Like imagine living in a time where there's no electric lights. All you have is fire. So essentially it's camping once it gets dark, like your mind starts hearing, you're thinking things and you start hearing things and you're, and I've said this before, like I, I enjoy camping, but I don't like the aspect of camping of being in the tent because I'm like, there's this little sheet of, of nylon separating me and, and whatever is out there. And then you start hearing noises and you're like, well, I'm, I'm not really inside and I'm not really protected right. from anything. If something mosquitoes. <laughs> Okay, I'm protected from mosquitoes. <laughs> We're going to go with that. Okay, but yeah, I, I can imagine at that era where, and then people are dying of disease and you have to come up with a reason for all these things happening that you don't quite understand because whatever knowledge of science had come about through the Renaissance kind of got lost in the Middle Ages. So yes, I can kind of see where like fire dragon is just probably nowhere near even close to the worst thing that they thought up in their brains. <laughs> I just love the cave drawings of also when you look at cave drawings and the perception of, of animals that they were trying to also understand the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you can even get to, oh, this is supposed to be an alien ship. And I'm thinking, 
was it really an alien ship or was it a creature they didn't understand properly or or just a, a natural phenomena that was truly natural like they used to think witches were horrible because they i don't know acupuncture was created and therefore they're healing and it just happened to be pressure point you know because we don't understand it and it's all witchcraft yeah, yeah. i mean that's I forgot who said it. There were some famous scientists that basically had the, you know, any any technology sufficiently advanced is uh, perceived as witchcraft by any society that, yeah, doesn't have a concept of what that thing is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm sure there's just, it's so easy when you look back to say stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, they used to thought a dinosaur was, was roaming around Africa and it was just the uh, super duper large lizards. But since so few people saw them because they didn't go into their habitat or range, it just became... I can't think of the name of the dinosaur, but there's a name for it that they so still think. Are you talking about the one with the long neck? No, I'm talking about there's actually like, it's like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay. Um, it's a cryptid, essentially, that people still believe and talk about in certain You're parts of Africa. You're talking about the Mokelembembe in Congo. Yeah, that's it. That's the it. It's a sauropod. It's a sauropod. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. I thought it was a, um, I so thought it was like a T-Rex looking thing. No, it's a bronchiosaur or a sauropod. Oh, okay. So I got it and, yeah, it's either a bronchiosaur or, or a sauropod. I honestly don't know much of the difference between the two of them. I, okay. Have to All right. Okay. But it's called the Mokelembembe. And sometimes when Pepita, it's a little bit of a pain, I call her the Mokelembembe. <laughs> <laughs> that one I have, I've heard about 20 names for Pepita. I have not heard the uh, dinosaur nickname. <laughs> <laughs> there goes your cryptozoology. <laughs> oh, man. There's, there's some fun cryptid videos out there. You've done a couple of them, haven't you? Yes. Yes, okay. we've done a couple. Right. They're fascinating. They're, I sh- so I shouldn't just try to make it up. Gotcha. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't know it. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we are going to head out because uh, now our conversations are already veering way, way off of baby animals. And uh, Maria and I can talk for hours upon hours, which is how this uh, – Channel kind of got started, but since we veered away from the main topic, we will uh, say goodbye. If you guys get a chance, please uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, click the bell icon for us so you get notifications of all our videos. If you're catching the audio podcast, uh, please follow us. No matter where you're catching us, guys, please uh, write us some comments. Uh, We love to read those. Uh, We like to know what you guys think of the show, especially now at the beginning as we're developing. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.